الحمد لله نحمده ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وبعد الله سبحانه وتعالى عند القرآن ساز بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون Oh you who have attained faith be mindful, be conscious, be aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner that's befitting to his glory and his praise and die not except in the state of loving surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala die as Muslims وبعد. It is narrated that one time the Prophet وسلم, sent Abu Ubaidah to Al-Bahrain to collect the, the, some charity and the zakah money from the people who live there. And it happens that the people there were a little bit wealthy and alhamdulillah they were very generous and they gave a lot of you know, money and wealth and, and Abu Ubaidah returned to Medina with a pile of you know, things and gold and silver and abundance. And the Prophet sallallahu said, just put it in the masjid. And everybody in the city of Medina heard the news. Abu Ubaidah is back. The people were generous. MashaAllah, there is a lot of things there. And everybody knows that the Prophet sallallahu is the most generous of people. Next day, Salat al-Fajr. The Prophet sallallahu enters the masjid. And he didn't even look at it. You know, things are in the masjid. He wasn't even curious. You know, it's just, just passed by. And the masjid is packed. Everybody came from the outskirts of Medina. They know he, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, very generous. So the masjid is full. And he, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, prays Salat al-Fajr. And after Salah, as his habit, he would sit. He wouldn't leave. He would sit and do his adhkar. Long dhikr, mashallah. He's doing his dhikr all the way till shuruq, you know, an hour. He turns around and guess what? Nobody leaves. Everybody's sitting there looking at him and smiling. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And of course, he understood what's going on. So he smiled back and he said, Perhaps you've heard that Abu Ubaidah returned with something. Everybody's like, you know, nodding their heads and smiling. Nobody's asking anything. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Abshiru, have glad tidings. You know, he's generous. I'm going to give you. But then he says something very important, a lesson that he teaches all of us. He says, ليس الفقر أخاف عليكم. وَإِنَّمَا أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ أَنْ تُفْتَحْ عَلَيْكُمْ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا فُتِحَتْ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ فَتَتَنَافَسُوهَا كَمَا تَنَافَسُوهَا فَتُهْلِكُكُمْ كَمَا أَهْلَكَتْكُمْ He صلى الله عليه وسلم This caring, loving, generous human being giving us a, an advice, a piece of wisdom that we, we need in our lives, in our family lives, in our community lives when we have abundance. He صلى الله عليه وسلم said By Allah, it is not scarcity. It is not poverty that I fear on you. It seems that the Ummah of Muhammad under scarcity, nobody wants to have, to have scarce uh, resources or be poor. But it seems, according to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that when you're poor, this is not what I'm afraid on, of, uh, on you from. Rather, walakin akhaf, I am really afraid on you from the following, that the life of this world opens its gates onto you. Tuftah, it opens up. Like it opened on the people before you. There were people before you. They were good. They were doing well. They were doing well when things were scarce. But when things became abundant, when they had abundance of things, and the life of this world really gave them, what happened? They started competing in it. And I'm afraid you're going to do the same thing. You will start competing in it like they competed in it. And it will destroy you like it destroyed them. So he sallallahu alayhi wa teaches us multiple things. First of all, the state of abundance. You would think, see abundance having materialistic things is not the problem. He didn't say when the dunya opens its doors on you, it's going to destroy you. No, 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 that's not what happens. It's the way we take it. Notice what he said, it's not abundance. But you would think we, when we have everything we want, we will compete less. You think people are more competitive when, because of their scarcity. When I don't have, that's a reason for me to seek more. He sallallahu alayhi wa is warning us, be careful with the human heart. 
Actually, if the heart gets clinged to the dunya, the opposite happens. The more you have, the more competitive you become. He's saying what? Competition might be the fiercest, not in the people that don't have, in the people that are wealthy and have, and the more they have, the more competitive they become. And we see that. We see that the people that compete the most are the people that are very famous, the people that are very rich. Uh, the more rich, the more famous, the more... You become even more competitive and you want even more. But you already have it. See, the disease is not that I don't have. It's something in the heart. The heart cannot be filled with dunya. It was created for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is vast because it was designed to, to understand and comprehend only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can satisfy this need that the heart has. But if I start looking at the dunya and instead having it in my hand, I start to use it to fill this deep well that I have, this deep void inside of me. I want to fill it with what people praise, status, wealth, things. It doesn't. And the more I drink, the thirstiest I become. Like seawater, the more you drink, the more thirsty you become. And I start taking more and more and more, and I can't fill my heart with it. That becomes destructive. This state of competitiveness is what destroys people, not the state of abundance. Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani used to say, Subhanallah, look at what he's saying. I would love. That the, the whole world, I would own it, I would get it in my hand. Why? So I can feed it to the hungry people. The Prophet وسلم, said, Ni'mal mal salih fi yad al salih. Blessed be abundance of wealth in the hands, notice, in the hands of a righteous person. Because it becomes a means. There is a big difference, brothers and sisters, for somebody who's asking Allah for wealth so that I can use it to reach him. Ya Rabbi, please give me a good degree so I can help people. Ya Rabbi, please give me wealth so I can build a masjid. I'm asking the life of this world because it's a means for Allah. And some people it's the opposite. Allah becomes the means by which they get the life of this world. Why are you asking Allah to get? Allah's the means and the purpose is worldly things. Versus no, worldly things are good when they're in my hands because I use them. To do good for people to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nevertheless, the hadith points to something really interesting. The concept of competition. He sallallahu alayhi wa is warning us, be careful from competitiveness. Well, is, is competition haram? Is it bad? I want to be first. We have that in our nature. I want my son to become the best. I want to become the best doctor. I, I want to become the first. Is that bad? Is that haram? Scholars say no. First of all, there is two types of competition. There is competitiveness in the matters of the hereafter and competitiveness in the matters of dunya. In the matters of the hereafter, Allah says, If you really want to compete, the big, don't compete about yani, foolish things. Compete in the things that are really worth it. What are they? The satisfaction of Allah. The ranks in the hereafter. Being at the highest level of Jannah. Uh, in, in, in the way I worship Allah, in ilm, in, there are things to compete in, things that have to do with the hereafter. Right? But what about worthy things? I want them to, is it still haram? The answer is no. But it's dangerous. Why is it dangerous? Why, what is the destructive element of competition that the Prophet said, be careful from that, it can destroy you. And to explain this, I'll share with you an example. I, I learned from our dear brother Muhi, right? And it's very interesting. It's about a king, again, notice a king, very rich, but still I want to be praised. I want people to, to say poetry about me. I want people to post things about me on the internet, so more and more and more. So get me the best poets in my kingdom. Why? I need more, I need better poetry. And they got him two poets, you know, best. Said, okay, go ahead, give me the best. First one starts, MashaAllah, very eloquent, excellent. Second one starts, MashaAllah, equally excellent. And the king was, which one is better? I don't know. Which one should I reward? I don't know. And then he said, okay, you know what? You're both good. Here is what I'm going to do. One of you ask for anything. I'm going to give it to him. But then I'm going to give his brother double. Guess what happened? Now they started what? No, 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 ya akhi, my brother, you start. No, no, ya akhi, until awal, you fit. No, 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 it's not. A, you, now you, you deserve it more. 
And then the king said, enough is enough. I've had it. You know, you guys are quarreling. I'll choose. You, you pick. You choose, and I'm going to give him double. So the man, what do I do? He's going to get double. He said, okay, I figured it out. Yes, my lord, I want you to take out one of my eyes. I still win, don't I? Did he really win? Is this about winning? Is this, this is about him not having. I become first by him losing. This is not about getting. This is about what I want to get by my brother losing. There is two ways to compete. In a race, you're running, mashallah, in a race, and I want to become first. But then somebody else runs and he's faster than me, and he comes before me. There is two ways available for me. One is to do what? Run harder, exert more effort, right? That's the positive way to compete. Exert more effort so you can somebody memorize the Quran. I want to memorize the Quran too. Okay, go ahead, please. Work as hard as he did. Somebody took the Nobel Prize. Work as hard as he did. But some of us are lazy. I'm not willing to exert that much of effort, yeah. That's too much. But I still want to come first. If I can't run faster and he's faster than me and I'm not willing to, to train like he trained, but I want to come first and he is coming before me, there is a second way for me to win. Instead of me pull, putting more work, I grab him and pull him back. I win by he, him tripping. If he trips, guess what? He falls. I become first. There is two ways to compete, brothers and sisters. I can become first by exerting more effort. Mubah, and I become, I can I come first by wanting others to lose. This introduces why competition is dangerous. That state of hating others, having a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wanting others to lose. Other people have good things. I want similar things like them. That's okay. Versus, if I cannot get it, they must lose it. That is called envy. Hasad. Al Hasad, a destructive disease. Shaitan had it. The first crime on earth was a result of hasad, envy. Envy can cause brothers to kill their own brothers because they, they, they're competing. But if I'm not winning, I hate that you win. I hate that you have. I want a good house. I want a good car. I'll try. But somebody else has a bigger house, has a bigger car. I don't like that. I envy him. I want him to lose it so I would have the best car and the best town. Uh, best house in town. Envy is destructive. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا يجتمعان في جوف العبد. They are never together in the heart of a servant. Al-Hasad wal-Iman. Belief in Allah, faith, and envy. Envy etches out faith. Destructive. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, is that Zakariya, the Prophet Zakariya Alaihi Wasallam said, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, Al-Hasid. This is why it is dangerous, why it is so destructive. This hadith says the following, that Zakaria alayhi salam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, a person who has envy is an enemy of my generosity and blessings. And he is not accepting of the way I divide things between people. And he is never accepting and content with what I give. Hasad, brothers and sisters, at the root of it, the reason it's dangerous, it's about what? Allah is generous. Allah always gives. Because He is generous. He gives to those who deserve and those who do not deserve. Why? Ya akhi, he doesn't deserve. Yes, but Allah is generous. He will still give him, whether I like it or not. But see, he's not. But Allah is forgiving. He will still get. Now, when I hate that, envy is about what? The way I react to the blessings of Allah unto others. When Allah gives me, the reaction is what? Alhamdulillah, ya Rabbi, lak alhamd. That's shukr, gratitude. But what happens when Allah gives other people, not me? I don't like that. He has more than I have. I think I deserve more than him. It doesn't make sense. Why does he have? I worked harder. What am I objecting on? As if I'm telling Allah, ya Rabbi, this is not fair. I should have been given, not him. Why did you give him while he didn't work as hard as me? Is it up to me to divide? Allah is generous. Maybe he is not and Allah wants to give him. No, that should not happen. I'm objecting on what Allah is doing. 
Shaitan did that. Ya Rabbi, why is he? Why did you honor him, Adam, more than me? It's not fair. Destructive. Yaqub alayhi salam. Yusuf. The story of Yusuf. It's about what? Envy. Hassan. He is, he is a young man. His father is a prophet. He is a, those are the children of a prophet. And yet, what were they envious about? Because we think we don't have envy, by the way. No, 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 envy is not for me. No, 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 be careful. A sheikh will not envy a doctor. If you come to a sheikh and tell him, well, this doctor is the best doctor in town, yeah, he good. But if you go to a sheikh and tell him, yeah, sheikh, today I went to Mission Bihu, Sheikh Tariq, may Allah bless him, gave a khutbah, that was the best khutbah ever. What, the, what have you done right there? You see? No, no, that's my area. See? And of course, now, alhamdulillah, the sheikh is good, he will fight himself, but he will be what? Envy happens in what you care about. The brothers of Yusuf, what did they say? What's this? Yusuf and his brother, our father loves them more than he loves us. Look what they're competing in. The love of their father. And we are strong and we're better. Surely our father is misguided. What's the solution? Look at why he loves him more. Maybe he's more pious. Do the same things, right? No, no, no. We can't do. Yusuf has qualities that his father loves him for. Be similar. Ask. No, no, no. اقتلوا يوسف أو ترحوا أرضه. Kill Yusuf or throw him away in the land. Then the space in the heart of your father will be free for you. And then you repent after that and become a righteous, pious people. Envy led to what? Murder. Attempt, of course, alhamdulillah, they throw him in the well, but he's your brother. Envy. What were they envious about? Something halal and legitimate. I'm envy. I want your love. So if I see you giving love to someone else and not me, I'm envious. And that tells us something, brothers and sisters. We have not only to protect our hearts from envy. We need to protect others from envy. Be careful. Always give people. Don't go in front of a person and start bragging others abundantly without be careful it's halal it's mubah but we i don't want that on another person do not go the example i gave if you want to go tell a sheikh about a good khutbah what you tell him yeah sayyidi mashallah you shiyukh, you do a wonderful job mashallah you guys give such wonderful wonderful work yani you, yourself and this other sheikh gave a wonderful that's fine do i have to do this no i have to protect my heart and other people's heart from this destructive disease of envy. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أفضل المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين. Please come forward and make space. There are people standing out there. Please make space for your brothers. Uh, envy is of different types, right? First of all, uh, so back to the question: What about if if I I want something that's good? Somebody memorized the Quran. I want I want to be a, a Quran reader too. So I I want what he wants. Is that wrong? Here is the key. If I want what he wants, but I, I don't want him to lose it, that's called ghibt. So it's about what? It's okay to want, you have a good car, I want a good car too. But do you want me to lose it? That's where hasad enters. So if I want good things that you have, whether it be money, Quran, recitation, ilm, but I don't care if you lose it or not, it's just, Ya Rabbi, like you gave him, give me. You're so generous to him, be generous to me. That's good. That's ghibta. That's positive. Envy is one what? I cannot get it. He's better than me. Then one of two things happen. I want him to lose it so I can get it. Now that's envy. The worst type of hasad is the satanic shaitani hasad, which is what? I want him to lose it even if I don't get it. Shaitan is this way. 
What, what benefits you that the children of Adam goes to hellfire? Does it save you? No. Why? It's just pure hatred. Envy has multiple roots that enter, enters. Arrogance is one of them, like shaitan. But hubb dunya the love of the worldly life, is the root of envy that the Prophet ﷺ spoke about. It enters in a very subtle way because I want something and it's so precious, I compete in it. And if I can't win and somebody else wins, I start what wishing that he would lose. That's the subtlety. Why? Are, are, are you full of hatred to him? No, but I love, I love to become number one. I love status. I want everybody to love me. And now there is another person that people love. Facebook posting things. Look at me. Look at me. What are you doing? And envy. This, this culture that we're promoting of competitiveness. Look at me. Look at me. I have more likes and I do more than you and we compete and then I can't help but I wish he didn't do that. I wish they didn't. Envy enters to the heart. Very destructive. What is the cure? First of all, what happens if I discover I do have envy? And to discover that, look in what you care about. We envy in the area that is important to us. If you're told that someone is better than you or have more in that area, how do you feel? Oh, I discovered I'm envious. What do I do? Is it haram? Not yet. If I look inwardly and you say, Ya Rabbi, I don't like that. I have it in my heart, but I don't like that. Ya Rabbi, please remove it from my heart. It's good. Because it's mujahada. I'm working against it. Haram is when I start acting on it. Typically, what do we do? I start, remember the example of the sheikh I gave? You start bad-mouthing that sheikh. Yeah, he doesn't know. He made a, an error in that fatwa. This doctor that you praise so much, you don't know. He, he, last time, why? Why are you saying bad things about him? I want to bring him down. Now I'm saying, I'm speaking, I'm acting, I'm posting, I'm doing things to bring a person down. That is the part that's haram. That's the part that's dangerous. When sharri hasidin idha hasad. When people envy, they can be evil. The things they will do and see, say and destructive. And, the, and Muawiyah radiallahu anhu said something really, really interesting. He said, Kull nas aqdar ala rida. Everybody, I can manage to satisfy. Illa hasid. Except an envious person. Fa'innahu la yarda illa bizawal al-ni'ma. Because he will never be happy till I lose everything I have. I cannot satisfy. He objects. What is the cure? Two things. There is a cure for the essence of the disease and the cure if I have it. If I have it, first of all, and I discover that I have a burst of envy, what should I do? I do the following. Who gave that person what he gave? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is so generous. So I say the following. Ya Rabbi, you gave him. Like you gave him, do not deprive me. But what if I still don't get? You say the following. Ya Rabbi, if you chose, and you know better than me. See, Allah knows to give him in the life of this world and deprive me in the life of this world, please, like you gave him in this life, give me in the hereafter. Give me your satisfaction. Like you gave him ranks in this life, give me rank with you. Like you gave him status, people love him in this world, make angels love me. Like you gave him a, a good husband, a good wife, give me the company of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And then you see what? Radit, Radit, Radit. I'm happy with this, fair deal, fair deal, fair deal. رضيت بالله ربه وبالإسلام دينه وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم that, that's a cure I remind myself يا ربي if my share in this whole life was you that you're happy with me and محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and Islam fair deal let them have whatever ولكن your mercy and generosity is vast enough you gave them don't deprive yourself see that that's the way we, we treat each other so that's, that's what happens if I discover I have the disease of envy. To uproot it from the core, envy is about hubb dunya The life of this world is narrow. That's why people compete in it. It's not vast enough for all of us. It looks big. It's not big. The son of Adam, nothing satisfies him. The hereafter is vast enough. So if I look at the hereafter, if I look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is wasi. All of us can go together and I finish with this brothers and sisters. In this world, competitiveness, I love Einstein. I study like him. I want to take the Nobel Prize. I love him. Do I, do I take a Nobel Prize? Do I become like him? No, sorry. You did not discover something he discovered. So no matter how much you loved him, no matter how much hard you worked, you didn't earn. Sorry.
But in the matters of the year after, brothers and sisters, it's different. Subhanak ya Rabbi. When I, what I care about is the rank with Allah, and I'll finish with this. And I hear the hadith that Uthman ibn Affan, mashallah, came one night, prayed a rak'ah of witr, one rak'ah. He finished the whole Quran in it. Many of us, how, how do you react when you hear this? This is something that Allah gave him. Some of us become very upset. Why? Because I can never be this way. What are you telling me? I'm nothing then. My ibadah looks that small now. How can he do? No, 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 brother, that's impossible. There is not enough time for him to do that. And I start, yeah, he, he did it multiple times. And other people pray today with half the Quran. Oh my God, I feel so bad because I, I will never be able to compete. I feel depressed. Brother, you made me depressed in that khutbah. No. Look, no, look at this. The Prophet ﷺ was asked by one, what do you say, O Prophet of Allah, someone loving people, but he's not like them? Al-mar'u ma'aman ahab. One of you is the, with the one he loves. So if Uthman ibn Affan recited the entire yeah, whole Quran in one rak'ah, and I say, Ya Rabbi, MashaAllah, what a wonderful human being. I love him for that. Guess what? Although you didn't do what he did on the Day of Judgment, you win with him. You are with him. Subhanallah. So if one of us does well, love that person and you have what he has. What kind of competition is this? All what I, I compete with you in, in, in heavenly things. But if you win, if you memorize more Quran than me, I love you for it. Guess what? We're equal now. Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. The matters of the hereafter is vast enough for all of us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us competitive in the hereafter. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our heart of envy, to purify our heart from the love of materialistic and worldly things. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to expand our hearts with knowledge of Him and with light from Him. اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان واجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم رد أمة محمد إلى التحقق بلا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله